Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to answer some questions. We've been getting a ton of them lately. So uh, I just wanted to get back to you on some answers. And I know that I might repeat a couple of those questions, so please be patient with us. But I uh, just wanted to kind of get through some of these because I feel it's worth my time to give you some answers to them. As always, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content, which is usually three days a week. All right, I'm gonna get into this, let's go. Do you remember the first deck you built? I do remember the first deck I built uh, by myself, and it was over 30 years ago. Uh, it was a pressure-treated deck. I don't have any pictures of it, but it was for a client. When I first moved back to Washington State, I was 21 years old, and it was something quick and dirty with some pier blocks, and pressure-treated lumber didn't make a whole bunch of money on it, but I was grateful. Uh, it was a great time to uh, get out there. My wife, Kiki, actually came out and helped me build it and it was just getting her done. So uh, that's the very first thing I built when I moved back to Washington. Where do you get your contracts from? Are they simple? I customize each contract that I do with my clients for that particular build. Every time I build something, there's something different. So I itemize everything on an invoice and then I describe in the contract what I'm building for them. There's also some legal jargon in there uh, to protect you and me and also uh, lien releases and things like that. If you're not sure, contact an attorney if you don't have one. Uh, I don't really suggest going online and looking for a contract. It's better to have somebody that knows your local state law help you with an ironclad contract so that if something, unfortunately, some things may arise and you might have to in, enforce it. So uh, have something that you can make sure that you're gonna either recuperate your funds or that legally you're not being held liable for something that wasn't in the contract. What are the challenges to doing docs versus decks? Most of the time docs, we don't try to get involved in setting piles or footings or anything in a lake bed. Uh, we have a lot of freshwater lakes here and saltwater. I don't get involved in saltwater docks as far as doing anything that ha requires setting footings into the ground. Usually we ask for somebody else to come in and handle that. Most of the time we're building subsurface above water. So the, there's one lake in particular that we build on that they drain it every year. So it's easier to get in and get the frame sturdied up or fixed or whatever. And then we can just do our standard decking techniques on top of the dock. The challenges are sometimes height, sometimes slope, a rocky bed, which can twist your ankles and jar your knees and hips. And then obviously if you're working above water is dropping your tools into the water, which we've done several times. And that's why we like to use the IP56 rated Metabo HPT drills, because at least we can salvage a drill even if the battery gets trashed. We didn't lose the drill. I've actually dropped DeWalt drills in salt water before and they were done, 30 seconds and they were done. So uh, unfortunately salt water is very brutal on tools and we try not to drop anything in the water if we can help it. What software do you use to make your structural plans for the city for the non-engineered jobs? I use Real-Time Landscaping Architect to do all my deck designs and I use that as well when I am going for permitting. I have to hand draw a lot of my plans and then I send them over to my engineer. He double checks everything. He sends me amendments that I need to make to my plans. I redraw and add to my existing plans and then he'll stamp them and then I'll send them in for permitting. Did you already have clients before you went on your own? If not, how did you acquire clients? No, when I started my business, I didn't have any clients. I had to advertise and back 30 years ago, the way I advertised, I couldn't afford the yellow pages. Plus when you first started on a business, the yellow pages would only come out once a year. So you had to wait to actually get in the yellow pages. So I would advertise in the local newspaper and I used to beat the street a lot and I'd go to multiple hot tub companies. And even if they were using a different deck building company, I would just hang out and kind of get to know the people and start talking to the salesmen and that kind of thing and go from there. So after that, I started uh, attending some home shows. I would, I would participate with local hot tub companies and then I started getting my own booth. And that's where I started really getting some great leads from is home shows. So I still do home shows this year, not because of COVID, but you know, we still participate in one home show and then we go to different trade shows and things like that. So anyway, that's how I got my start. And, and then it was Yellow Pages. And I probably advertised in the Yellow Pages for about 15 years until my web presence took over. And then now social media, YouTube and Instagram are really great advertising mediums. 
How many jobs per year versus bids? So I usually close about 15 to 20% of the deck bids that I go on. A lot of people don't realize the budget that's required to have a, have a really nice deck built. So it's all about education and yeah, you can pre-qualify people. You got these salesmen that think, oh yeah, I, I close 80% of what I go on. It, you know, good for you. I find, I've been doing this for 30 years. Uh, if I'm closing 20%, I'm doing pretty good. You know, any higher than that, it's just a miracle. So don't don't expect to have a 100% closure rate. It's just not possible. What is the best way to hide seams? Do you ever line them up? I used to do a lot of random patterns where we would butt joint boards over the top of a joist. But in the end, I, I realized that it's really uh, more difficult on your frame. It, you're putting four screws into one spot over the center of an inch and a half joist and you're trying to pre-drill and add screws and with all the hidden fastener techniques and methods nowadays I prefer to break all my boards on a particular line it could be a curve it could be straight it just depends on what it is uh, I don't always know exactly unless I lay it out on a computer but I like to do intentional breaks versus random patterns advice on measuring fields to cut for border I'm planning a one inch overhang. All I can say is don't forget to add in your gaps before you cut your field boards because if you have three, three sixteenths inch gaps, you know, that's gonna be like 11 sixteenths of an inch of a difference, almost a full half inch different from where you want it. So instead of having that one inch overhang, you'd have an inch and a half overhang. So uh, don't forget to add the gaps in before you make your cut. Method for accounting for the time spent on difficult job sites in a bid, hills, second story, et cetera, et cetera. I would just say cover your expenses, man. Um, itemize your bids. Just don't throw out a number and hope it sticks. You know, consider the extra time you're gonna take for that second story deck, the surface borders, all the little extras that are going in, fascia, details. Don't forget to cover those expenses. If it's really a tall deck, consider uh, adding some price per square foot for that so that you get yourself covered from climbing those ladders all day long. Consider how tired you're going to be at the end of the day and that kind of thing. Uh, trust me, if you don't, you're going to learn real quick that you should have. Do pergola posts need to be anchored to the ground or into the deck frame is okay? I think it depends on the loading requirements that the pergola and the structure of the deck it depends on a couple things. If you're using like a Lynx pergola, they have steel brackets that fit very well and will hold the, the structure together properly. If you're doing a pergola and you're just winging it or you just have posts, I would box frame them into the deck or I would go all the way through into their own foundation. It depends on the loading. If you don't know the loading of your pergola, then you might want to consult the structural engineer. Does the sealant you guys use stay even if material is wet? Not quite as good. We use Q-Tech Extreme for all of our end cuts. Even if it's really wet out and we cut a board, if we use Q-Tech on it right away, it'll still absorb into the end grains because the end grain is going to be dry. Unless you're just barely cutting off the edge and it's wet, it still could be wet. But it doesn't absorb quite as well, but Q-Tech Extreme will still absorb into the end grains and protect it. How do you achieve the slope for the framing when using Dexter Dry? We allow for a 1 8 inch slope per foot. That's minimum, so you can put a quarter inch per foot in there if you want, but you got to leave an eighth inch per foot slope for your Dexter Dry. How do you secure joists that are sitting on top of a beam? We toenail all of our joists to our beam, usually in at least with three nails, 16D nails, so I'm doing two from the right or left and then one from the other side. And once we pin everything down and we have all of our blocking installed, then we'll go back and add either a hurricane clip or a twist tie, a Simpson branded tie that will attach to the joist and to the beam for a positive connection. Decking screws, face fix or concealed and why? Uh, I always am down to do a concealed fastener. We use several different clip systems, but on certain installs, especially on docks where there's a lot of movement and water is gonna be banging up against, and there's gonna be a lot of compression against the deck, we always face screw with stainless steel screws because stainless steel is gonna flex a little bit. Uh, when things are trying to move, expand, contract, water, pressure, boats hitting something, you want some flexibility. Carbon screws are gonna snap and stainless steel screws will flex. Plus the fact that they will last longer in a marine environment leads me to the deduction of using stainless steel with our Cortex system and then we plug it and then we have a nice fastener free top. Unless you're really critical and you get down on your hands and knees, you can see those corks, but it is a beautiful look and I'm really feeling solid about the way that that dock turned out. Where do you even start with such a complex project like that? 
like some of the harder projects that you've done? Well, you know, you, you start with a plan and then you start with the foundation. And once the foundation's done, then you start building up from there. So we do it all that way every time. Foundation, post, beams, joists, and then it just goes from there. What is your favorite brand of impact driver? I'd have to say the Metabo HPT IP56 rated triple hammer impact is definitely the drill of choice for us, especially in the Pacific Northwest where it rains so much. Do you ever run into any followers or fans in Tacoma or Olympia? Yes, I do. I run into people all the time. It's funny, at a gas station, at Costco, at the bank, people recognize the brand. They recognize me. They recognize my skull cap. They just say, hey, Dr. Dex, what's up, man? We follow you on Instagram. We love what you're doing. Or we follow your YouTube channel. Keep up the good work. Great editing. And we, we really take a lot of pride in that. Uh, we're glad that we can get some locals to recognize us and to appreciate our brand. Thank you very much. Do you only use AZEC? Uh, pretty much. AZEC is my decking of choice. Uh, when you find something that you really love, you tend not to deviate from it. I'm not trying to use other brands or other products. We're so used to it and we love the way it looks. So that's why I continue to use the AZEC products. What's your top tip or advice with decking? Always have a plan. It's not good to start building a deck on a piece of cardboard with some pencil drawings. Have an idea of what you're doing. I can do it, but I wouldn't suggest many go off and just start building a deck. You're gonna forget something or you're gonna have different time laying things out. I always, when I show up on a project, I know where my footings are going. Day one, I know where to dig. I know where to go in and make adjustments. I know where the posts have to go. I know where the beams have to go. I know the lumber spans. But if you have a plan, then that'll help you get around it. Sometimes I actually bring a computer to work when it's very complex and I'll use the computer to help me figure out a specific length on a specific joist in a specific area of the deck and those kind of things pre-planning will help you be more successful in deck building. What brackets or spacers would you recommend for a ground level deck over a slab? Maybe look into outdoor, outdoor, at outdoor living. Uh, they're out of Australia, but they make a aluminum and pedestal system. They are gonna be bringing their products to the United States soon. So check them out. Uh, you could look at the Bison pedestal system or even Decorators makes a sleeper system that you might be able to use for a flat roof. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw or you learned something from this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. If you can think of other questions that you might want answered in the future, don't hesitate to leave those below and we'll try to put them in another video like this one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.